situations happen and you're not able to continue your studies, you're not able to show up in class as expected as an international student, what are you going to do to make sure your admission is still intact, to make sure the fees you paid is still valid for your course duration and everything is still all fine and good? That is what I'm going to be touching on in this video. How far? How are you doing? Hope you're doing very well. So today, I'm going to be sharing my own experience of how I was able to defer my MSc studies as an international student, a tier 4 student. You know how you've come to study in a foreign land and unforeseen circumstances hit you and you just have to pause your studies at the time. It could be financial. There are different situations that could make you want to pause your education and continue at a later date. For certain people, it becomes so difficult that I'm, I feel so hot the weather is hot because i'm wearing something see let's grab that for some persons they happen to abandon their studies which is not a good idea and then the lecturer will be calling their names every now and then for attendance and they are nowhere to be found but you do not want to do things that way you want to do things right especially being an international student because you already know in case you do not know if for whatever reason you are not present in class for your courses the school has the right to report you to the home office and apparently you know what that means your visa gets to be cancelled and so many complexities come from there that is why you want to do things right so say situations happen and you're not able to continue your studies you're not able to show up in class as expected as an international student what are you going to do to make sure your admission is still intact to make sure the fees you paid is still valid for your course duration and everything is still all fine and good that is what i'm going to be touching on in this video so here today i'm going to be telling you everything and step i went through in order to get the deferral of my course approved by my school admin without losing my admission without losing my initial fee deposit with my tier 4 visa still intact right now I'm no longer on the tier 4 visa as I've got my resident permit but as at the time of this situation I'm trying to tell you the deferral process I was still a tier 4 visa first things before you think about deferring your course you need to think if whatever situation is about to make you defer your course is valid like you have to think it through do you think it's is reason enough to want to post your education you have to convince yourself and be sure that whatever it is you want to put forth to your school admin is actually worth considering even by you yourself so you're gonna to have to be the number one judge before you put it together and present to your school there are different situations in which people put forth a cost deferral but it's up to the school to choose which is valid enough to grant you a free cost deferral because normally if you have to defer your course and the school doesn't approve it you're likely going to lose your fees lose the admission be at the risk of being reported to the home office so in my own situation the reason i brought forth to them to grant me a cost deferral was that i was pregnant my own admission was towards the end of 2016 and as of 2017 I got pregnant with my first child. Being that I was pregnant, the school considered it valid enough reason as to why I will not be able to attend my courses going forward. But you know what? It was not at the initial stage. So I'd already gone past my first trimester, my second trimester. I was heading to my third trimester before I had to put in for the deferral. And not what is the fact that I was attending all of my classes despite how difficult it was for me. I was struggling through it all. I never missed a class for one day. I was punctual. My attendance was 100% because as an international student, every time you come to school, you're going to have to sign in, like clock in with your student ID card. Let me also mention that I was doing my MSc studies in International Tourism and Hospitality Management, the University of Hertfordshire, and my school was the business school. I was doing my classwork religiously. I was doing all of my assignments. I was coming for group work. I was defending all of my assignments, presentations, everything 100%. So these are the records the school had to go through in order for them to see how serious I was in my education because many times they have this um, pre-notion that especially international students and remember as I when I'm talking about is before the two years post study visa so you're expected to finish studying and leave so they have this pre-notion that once you're coming as an international student many people get to abandon the studies and leave so in order for them to believe that you actually came to study there had to be a reason 
reasonable reason for them to consider granting you know, an international student a deferral. So in my own situation, I was obviously pregnant and I've been attending all of my classes religiously and doing all that is expected of me as a student. If I had put in for this deferral earlier than when I did, say my second trimester, my deferral application wouldn't have been approved. But it made sense, like it made complete sense that I was in my third trimester and from your third trimester, I think about from 34 weeks, they consider your deferral application because it makes sense that you are close to having your baby and it's very possible that you wouldn't be able to juggle schoolwork and that stage of your pregnancy. And noteworthy is the fact that as at this time before I put in for um, my deferral, I'd already completed my coursework. So everything that had to do with schoolwork, attending classes and all had been completed. The entire duration of my course was one year and two months, including graduation ceremony and all of that stuff, you know. And my course was split into three sections. The first one is the class attendance, you know, class work and all. Then the second part was group presentation, the stage in which um, students get shared into several groups and then you all work together as a team and then bring forth your work, submit it to your supervisors, get to defend it and you know score a grade on it. Then the last section of the MSc program is the dissertation. So the dissertation was what was left and at the completion of the dissertation, I get my MSc certificate. So without completing the MSc, um, without completing the, the dissertation, just the um, A and B section of the MSc program qualifies you, me in this case, for um, a diploma certificate. So even if you do not go ahead to complete the dissertation, you get a diploma certificate for the section A and B part of the course that's been completed. So as at this time, being an international student, I had already completed these two sections. So after my deferral application had been approved by the school, by my business school giving my circumstance at the time they had to send off my certificate because my certificate was already ready and by certificate i mean diploma certificate it had all of my coursework all of my results that i had at the time compiled together in certificate form and sent off to my home address from where I was coming from in Nigeria, so back to my home country, Nigeria. I also mentioned that I credited all of my coursework, all of the um, assignments, coursework, group work, everything up till the point of my deferral application, I credited them all. So there was no need to carry over any course. I didn't have to be receive any assignment. There was no carryover whatsoever. That probably had aided my smooth deferral because what came with my own deferral is my school fees is still valid. I can come back whenever it is I'm ready to continue my MSc program in order to get the master's degree certificate. So what happened is my education was post to be commenced whenever it is I am ready which if not properly done my admission will have been forfeited the school fees I paid would have wasted or gone into voicemail and then I'm gonna have to reapply for the course if I still wanted to study we pay a fresh school fees so yeah what I'm trying to make you understand in this video is as an international student it is very very important that for whatever reason you decide to say financial or anything my own situation for example pregnancy you cannot continue your study make sure before the time you're putting in your application you have done a a huge lot in terms of your course you have fully participated and done your best in terms of your education so it doesn't look like you did not actually come to study you understand that part here yeah. also being good communication with your course leader because they will actually give you the best step give you the best advice as to how to go about it whatever your circumstance is your course leader is actually the best person to give you advice Tell other advice what is best and how you stand a great chance to get your deferral approved by the school. Once I get back to my studies in terms of completing my dissertation, I might be bombarding you all <laughs> with educational content and other of my content. No one will be lacking. Leave your comments in the comment section and I'll definitely read them. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.